call the Board of Education meeting to order, please. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to all. Mr. President, I move that we accept the approval of the agenda with the following amendments. Additional certified and classified personnel actions for consideration, item number E3. Remove item number G1, unfinished business, second grade readiness from the original agenda. And add item J, J? J2, executive session, matters of non-elected personnel and their contractual obligations. Any questions or discussion? Any public comment? I would like to take this moment to recognize our new mayor who is in attendance for our session. but I've been anxiously awaiting the results of our first grade readiness pilot program. So on Thursday and Friday, Dr. Atha, Dr. Dennis, and I met with all the elementary principals, and we sat down with them. They, we looked at their rubrics for all the kids that they were talking about having retentions for this year. Um, we, looked, we, we asked them the question, what have you done to differentiate core instruction for them? What kinds of intervention have these kids had? What does parent involvement look like? What kinds of things have you done for engagement? What kinds of conferences have you had with these parents? And then how have you monitored? So those were some of the questions that we asked at that time. Um, just to kind of put it in perspective, here was what the committee asked for last year. The goal was to put structures in place to ensure that all the students were first grade ready. And just a reminder of some of the skills that were on that rubric last year that they shared that they taught this year, and these were the skills that were given to parents all year long. Some of the assessments that they used, some of the assessments were screeners and diagnostic assessments that they already used, but then some were created by them to meet the needs of their kids. Here were some of the things that they had for support for teachers. We started out with Kindergarten Roundup during enrollment day last year, and we considered it as a success because we had about 50% of our students show up with their parents. We were able to screen those students. We were already able to give the parents some information about what needed to happen for them to be successful in first grade. I'm sorry, yeah, first grade. Um, one of the things we also noticed was that our early childhood center was yielding pretty good results because we could sure tell a difference between those kids who 
came in from our early childhood center and those kids who didn't. We also got some pretty good data from our early childhood center. They were able to give their PPVT, which kind of shows us what kind of vocabulary those kids had. So we had that information already on those kids. And then another thing that happened this year was Sue Dennis and Susan Boyle, they facilitated a kindergarten club for teachers that met once a month. They talked about issues, they talked about getting parents involved, they talked about different things that were related to kindergarten. They had a couple of guest speakers and I was honored to be able to go speak to them at their request, so that was kind of interesting. <clears throat> so that's the support we had for teachers. The support for parents, they had a lot of support for parents. As we talked with principals, these were some of the things we were able to gather from the conversation. Of course, the kindergarten roundup was mentioned several times. The open house was mentioned. The pamphlets that were created by the kindergarten teachers. The flip charts that provided um, ideas and activities for reading and math. Differentiated resources. And some of our schools did a really neat thing at screening last year. If they had a child that um, maybe needed some help in math, they had some, they had some pre-made math flashcards and things like that that they would give to particular parents. Or if there were some color words that they needed, they had color word cards. And I think a lot of these schools picked up on that. More will do it this year than did it last year. So that, that's great differentiation. Um, a lot of our teachers were able to model for parents some of the activities and things that would help their students. So the modeling was a big deal. And of course, parent-teacher conferences was a source of information. Um, a lot of our schools also had special kindergarten meetings where they haven't had that before. They would have just a kindergarten meeting throughout the year where they would call the parents in, they would go over those rubrics again, they would talk about the expectations, and they would give out even more resources. So, I'm even more confident than, than before that we have done a great job this year of informing our parents about what is needed for those expectations and that exit criteria. So here are the results. You can see 2010-2011 um, we had 55 students that we were referring for retention. The year 2011-2012 that went down to 37. Last year it was 32. So far this year, we're looking at about 30. One of the things that we talked about during the meetings last week, we really didn't have a set deadline to finish looking at that data. Um, we decided that May 15th will be the last day that we will fill out a rubric on a child. So we have at least three weeks to get some of these kids over the hump. We, have, we saw a lot of rubrics that were 21, 22, we need to get these kids to at least to 24 to be successfully exiting this criteria. So we have a lot of those kids that are right there. Three more weeks just might get some of those kids over the hump, but I would say we're looking at maybe five to six. So that 30 may go down five or six. So if we look at what we typically see with retentions, knowing in the past that it was based on feelings, it was based on um, maybe behavior uh, based on immaturity. We now know that this is based on academics and getting those kids where we want them by the end of the year. So I feel really good about where we're at and what we've done to support parents. So I think we've had a successful year. Questions? Question on that. Is, is enrollment, was the enrollment the same or pretty close to the same from 2010 to current? Yeah, we've not had a lot of change there, so that's pretty similar. since February, since that last parent-teacher conference, and they've been telling parents, this is a possibility. This is where we need to get your child for the end of the year. And I would say a lot of teachers have had several conversations since that time, just to give parents an update as to where they are in the process. When do you sit down and actually tell them, okay, in our, based on their scoring of the group, when do you actually say, okay, 
they're going to cut it off May 15th. I would, I would assume that they would have that conversation between now and the, the end there. And would you say that the the lowered number of projected uh, retentions is due to earlier intervention or um, a more or the guidelines being more data driven? Very much data driven. You, you, th you don't think that because I, I I would assume that because we're seeing this data not only once or twice but we're monitoring it throughout the school year. We're identifying student needs earlier and addressing it, getting parents involved earlier. So maybe we're um, intervening to the point where we're we're doing the work to get the student up to speed. Do you see what I'm saying? I think we're doing a lot of the work, but I also think they work with parents because we heard instance after instance where the parent has been working too. That's what I so, mean. That's an yeah. intervention to me. It's oh, like absolutely. that's not just because the rubric is is working. I think it's because of we're intervening. Yeah. And I think we're doing we're showing our due diligence up front. I mean obviously it's both. Sure. Um, but I would like to say it's a lot of it is uh, working with the kids sooner than later. And parents too. Yeah, 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 exactly. That criteria I get the sense that that this approach allows that better communication with the parents where the expectations are more clear. Um, and so when we get down to that point at the end of the year, it's, there's no surprise. There's no surprise. Everything they've done this year has been very aligned. The grade cards align to what they're doing with the exit criteria. So what they're seeing in the rubric matches what they're seeing on the grade card. Everything to me is consistent. I haven't seen any problems with that at all. So it's good. Yeah. As the principals talked about parents who were a little bit reluctant to want their kids retained, mm -hmm. there were maybe only a handful. There weren't very many. I was surprised at that. I thought there would be more resistance to that. But I think it's that education early on from screening till now. So I think we've done a nice job talking to parents. I know we're not specifically talking about the second grade readiness program tonight, but do you feel that what we've done for the first grade readiness um, is aligned with what has been proposed for second grade readiness? Yeah, in fact, the teachers, when they were looking at the criteria, they looked at what they put in place for this group, and they said, we don't need to start new. We just need to expand on what they've done. So it looks very similar, and that was really their plan, because they know that the parents coming from having kids in kindergarten will want the same thing for their kids in first grade. They will want that to look similar and they will want to know what that progression is. So I just think with the consistency we're gonna we're gonna be more successful and the parents are gonna be more in the know and more on board with what we're doing. And I think it's really gonna make um, all of our buildings look the same in the classroom, which is one of our goals. So
proposing to do is to move the virtual program, virtual academy, to year-round uh, for a lot of reasons coming up here. Got them up here for you. Um, we we have had a lot of discussion with people who uh, a lot of our virtual students were learning this year, but our first year are very unconventional students. We check the login sheets. We're getting people logged in from one, two, three in the morning working on their coursework. It fits in well with uh, the shift work. One overwhelming thing when we polled them was that uh, they would they would use this over the summer, and that's among both our regular alternates, uh, school students who are in the building, and our virtual students who don't attend at all. Right now, 80 of our students. I have 128 students enrolled as this morning. Um, <coughs> I was talking before, Gloria. Uh, we started the very first day uh, with four, and uh, by the end of the first week, we had eight. Now we're at 128. Um, 80 of those people right now are either in their senior year somewhere working on graduating very shortly or adults who are working on it uh, at their own pace. You know, really pushing the adults as, as far as we do the others, but they're making a lot of good progress. Students can complete uh, credits through the summer and instead of just getting to the point of the end of the school year and stopping. One of the things that doesn't make a lot of sense to a virtual student is I'm not coming here. May doesn't mean a lot to them. They want to keep going. Almost universally, they want to keep going. We polled everybody we could get to talk to, and not one person said that they didn't want to do it over the summer. Continuity. Uh, one of the things we're looking at is, is keeping people with account. I, mean, I don't want to just talk about account. There's a lot of education here that has nothing to do with that. But when we have all these folks over the summer, we're going to have them for September as well. It just goes to reason. Just, there's continuous rolling on. They're not stopping. So that means instead of the break even point, which we did break even this year, we anticipate that going way into July. Goal oriented students uh, can keep moving. They don't have to slow down for anything. Uh, they can catch up. They can get their 21 credits done as quickly as they care to. If I have students who have failed the virtual class, not finished it, or if I have students in the alternate center who have fail the class, they can use this over the summer to get caught back up. They don't have to fall behind and just deal with it for three months. Got a little quote there for you. If you've missed on any school, you're able to make up work that you're behind on. That obviously, better prepare students for the following school year because we don't have that peak where the chart goes up, 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 and then falls off in the summer. Some benefits across the district. Uh, talk to Dr. Johnson, any IEP student who wants to pursue engineering courses can do it over the summer. One of the people that we're asking about having uh, you guys let us use over the summer will be a paraprofessional from the special ed department, which will allow IEP students to receive services over the summer. So we don't keep anybody out of this. They want to do that. It lets us enroll students who come to town or decide they want to start pursuing it during the summer. Uh, during the summer. We don't have to tell them, that's great, you're fired up today, we'll see you later on. In a couple of months, come on back, and maybe you're still fired up, maybe you're not, but if you're fired up today, let's enroll them today. And that lets, that's going to let us do this. Um, I've also been in communication with Mr. Morales. We're offering this to GCHS, uh, so that any student who's enrolled in E-2020 Engineering Resources through Garden City High School can continue that progress over the summer. We'll maintain the records, we'll maintain the grades, and then at the end of the summer, we'll uh, shoot all that information back to them so that those kids don't have to lose <coughs> the summer either. TEP kids, uh, my, my therapeutic education program kids, if they're working, and they all are, on edgenuity courses over the summer or uh, during the school year, I don't have to slow them down. I can say, go ahead, go home, you got a computer, keep working. That was especially important to me because my TEP kids are already at half speed academically because of the therapy. This lets me have a few more months with them and keep them back on track. What do I need to make this work? I need 25 extra days on the actual instructor themselves. I need a pair of the increase from 215 to 260. I need the secretary to go from 215 to 260 for the reasons listed up there. And at the current FTE, right now, if we maintain or if we if we get between four and five, call it five, 
if I can retain five students over the summer uh, to be counted in the fall, that pays for the admission. Anything above and beyond that goes, like I said, into the final. Okay. We have nine people graduating this year from the virtual academy. They, they, they aren't taking any classes in person anywhere. There are nine graduates this year totally from virtual academy. Now that may seem like a small number for our first year, but I want to <coughs> refer you to some of the data that I brought to you when we started this. The previous three years, we sent 76 graduates down the road to other programs. So instead of sending those 76, and I don't know if we got them all. I'm assuming we have because I have yet to have anybody in town choose another program outside of town now that we've got this here in town. I'm not saying they haven't, but they haven't come to me and told me that. Everybody we've spoken to about this has chosen our program. We sent 76 down the road for the last three years. Now this year we're graduating nine on our own and 127, it should be 128 when we're on this morning. And really it, it all boils down to the fact that this is here. It, this is not going away, this is here. And like I said, my commitment, our commitment to the board and to the community was to do this the right way. We, we are checking progress daily at nine weeks of the students making progress. We're putting them back to where they started so we don't lose any more progress. Other things used to drive me nuts as a principal was I was getting kids who had gone to another online program and stayed there and stayed there and stayed there and nobody turfed them out until well into the second semester. So I was getting people that had missed two, three, four quarters of school. And now we're avoiding that. Oops. I'm sorry. Ron, I really haven't been able to. I, I would have put them up there for you if I had. Um, it's just kind of the way I do it, but I can't really think of any. I, mean, I have everybody that I've talked to about changing numbers of days on their on their work year has been totally in favor of it. Love the idea. The people I've talked to who are attending have all been very very positive. They want to keep going over the summer. We've learned a lot our first school year uh, as a virtual academy. We're going to put that to work. Try to understand, wrap my mind around this carryover count through the summer issue. Um, so, if we keep five students engaged online past a certain date through the summer, you can include them on the next year's count for funding? No, what I was trying to point out was, and I wasn't clear, I'm sorry, 
what I was trying to point out is if this lets us maintain four or five, call it five more kids, uh, more students, for the count that we didn't lose over the summer because we just went away, those five students will pay for the admission that I'm asking for. The, the only thing I need to do is count five more people. But if I, the way, probably the way I should have said it. If I can count five more people because of this, which I think I will, One of the questions, too, that I have is if, if I'm in one of these programs, how much time do I have to complete it? Well, again, we monitor your progress. You must be making an average. That your average with us is about six to seven hours a day. If you're not making that, and again, we say about per day because it's, it's a gray area. You have people who can't do it all week long because they work. And then they'll hit it so hard on Saturday and Sunday. You know, they're so, but, you know, it's an, it works out to an average of about what time you would be in a seat in school. That's what we're holding it to. You, know, you, you have to do that. Um, is that what you were asking? Yeah, basically, there it's sort of the accountability as issue here. That you know, it's it's a, a grand and glorious thing for us to be able to facilitate these folks to be able to get their education, and and I want to be sure that it's clear that they have the accountability element here while we're considering additional funding. It's a it's a win-win, and if we can get, as you pointed, five people uh, to stay in as opposed to evaporating because we ended the thing in May, uh, then it pays for itself. And that's the point here is it's an enhancement without an additional burden as long as we can see that kind of results. If I get if I get any sizable portion of the people who responded uh, positively to this to complete, then it will work. We're experimental. I mean we are still in the first year. And I'm projecting fifty percent or what are you projecting? Fifty percent of, of the hundred and twenty eight? Yeah, staying throughout the summer. But the hundred and twenty eight you gotta remember that's after I mean we were higher at one point, but uh, the last quarter we had a a lot of guys, well, I don't know, should say a lot, we probably had in the teens, of people who weren't doing anything. We make the phone calls, we make the personal contacts, we drive to their house, and we open the door and say, where's your laptop, why aren't you working? We do these things, and then if we really can't rally a kid, um, we put them back to wherever they came from. If they're going back to my alternate center, then I say, guess what, guess where I'll see you Monday morning, you're coming back to school because you didn't do anything with this. It's not punitive, it's you didn't take advantage of this opportunity. Let's get you back to where you can learn. Uh, we had only nine go back to the high, to Dart City High School. But that's what they came to us from to do virtual. And a lot of times students don't believe that we're going to track them. We can tell you how many minutes they were on. We can tell you if they had idle time. We can tell you how long a break they took in, in pursuing their course. You know? So we're pretty sure that we're at least having them online doing what they're supposed to do. But of, this, of the virtual students that are online mm -hmm. right now, how many of those do you suspect would continue this summer? From speaking to people totally anecdotally, I'm hoping half of them. Yeah, that's I, what I, I'm thinking. hoping for half to three quarters. Yeah. Because a lot of people just, they, they're, in, they're in the group, and if they stop the group, it's, it's not going to continue going. <coughs> because one of the things I want, I, and you, it's just amazing what you're doing, and it's exciting. We certainly want to be able to um, take this a step at a time, and um, and then if it doesn't work for some reason, I don't know what happens in June, but if nobody stays in there, then we're, we'll want to make that adjustment. Sure. But it seems like a, a pretty important investment to take advantage of, of your work here for that potential success. And then if it doesn't work, we can change. Well, if it doesn't work, we'll prove it doesn't work, and then we can do something we, different. We can do something different. Drop back five and try again. Uh, it, it, it's a budgetary challenge, I think, that we're yeah. facing overall. But this is a small piece <clears throat> of the, the bigger program that seems to make sense from the standpoint of the additional investment. But that's just a, my thought. I think it's going to open the door to how kids want to learn too. <coughs> I think this is the beginning of, of a movement towards all-year education, honestly. 
I mean, I know that I'm on my soapbox here, but um, it just seems to flow. I mean, why stop? <coughs> the calendar does. So, anyway. If, if this was the past, um, to the vote, when, when is everybody so that we can get some results back, some feedback from you on the summer program? Well, I could, I, if you're talking about whether or not anyone participated, uh, we could do that at the end of the summer. If you're talking about how it's going to pan out for the count of people who attended over the summer, we could do that at the count. Both if you like. We have to. Yeah, we could both get that. Got it. Together in one meeting, that'd be great. All right, Mr. President, I'd like to move that we accept the year-round virtual school as presented. Okay. Any further discussion or question? Just, and, and I know it's there, but just to uh, echo Alex's comment, it would be good to uh, expect a report uh, just so that we can be confident that not only the extent of the success, but maybe, man, this is so good. What's your next proposal? Kind of thing. So, uh, only comments I have. Anyone else? Okay. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Thank you. Thank, Thank you all very much. Thank you.